Hello and welcome to the Chelsea Fans Channel. This is your preview for Sunderland v Chelsea featuring me, Jack D and you, fellow Chelsea fans. So as you know, from now on, you guys at home can get in touch with us and have your videos played out here on the Chelsea Fans Channel. Uh, details of how to do that exactly are in the descriptions below. Today we've got two such Chelsea fans that have uh, got involved. They sent through their videos and here they are. They're getting played out on the, uh, on the channel. So today we've got Yarin from the Chelsea Supporters Club Israel and we've also got Jesus from Mexico. First of our five talking points today is Yarin and he wants to talk to you about our new formation. Yarin, take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Yerin Levy, I'm from Israel and I'm one of the directors of the Israeli Supporters Club. So, uh, as you all know, ever since Antonio Conte decided to change the formation to 3-4-3 after we lost to Arsenal 3-0, uh, we started to look like a different team. We are much, much more solid. We only conceded two goals in the last nine games and one of them was an own goal by Gary Cale. Unlucky Gary. Anyway, uh, apart from being solid, the formation uh, helped our flair players to express themselves much better. You can tell that Eden Hazard is enjoying himself on the pitch. Uh, he's not have to stay on the left wing all the time, because now we have Marcus Alonso who can do the job on the left wing. He can play more centrally and support Diego Costa, and Diego Costa is on fire right now. Uh, 12 goals in 14 matches uh, equals his tally from last season, it's amazing. To be honest, in the start of the season, I didn't thought we had the players to play the 3-4-3 formation, but I was wrong and I'm glad I've been wrong about this. And now, thank God, we've got Jesus who's going to give us an opposition preview on Sunderland. Jesus? Now, talking about our next rivals, Sunderland. Well, the Black Cats arrived to this game with a hurtful 3 nil against the Swans, uh, putting them under heavy pressure because they are at the bottom of the Premier League with 11 points. And well, it's not even the half of the season, but who wants to be at the bottom? So, I expect to see a game very similar to the one against the West Brom. Uh, very physical with no spaces, but let's hope that the urgency of the Black Cats motivate them to be a more attacking and open team. Point number three, and we're back to Yarin, and he's going to talk to us about the influence of N'Golo Kante. Antonio Conte managed to improve us massively without making a lot of signings, but we did manage to put our hands on N'Golo Kante, one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, in my opinion. And uh, alongside Nemanja Matic, who rediscovered his form, they look amazing together, aren't they? They do an amazing job for us uh, and they having a great, great partnership in the middle of the pitch for us. I would like to read you a quote that Angolo Kante said recently about Matic. When he goes forward, I stay back. When I go forward, he stay back. When you play together, it's good to understand each other and I think it is a good partnership. We also, uh, since Cesc Fabregas recently came, uh, he came on for uh, Matic against City and he did a really, really good job. Uh, maybe he doesn't have the legs and he's not good defensively as Matic, but he still have his magic hat, he can still give a pass like he did uh, to Diego Costa uh, at the first goal. And it's good to know that we have players who can come on from the bench and do the job. Uh, I'm really happy to know that we have players who can do the job when others can play like uh, Fabregas did against City and I still think we need some covers for some positions in our squad for example I don't think we have someone who can uh, replace Moses or Alonso or Hazard or Costa uh, so it's a point to think about in January, I think. So I've been here in Levy. Good luck against Sunderland and let's get three points and ten wins in a row. Come on, you blues. Point number four, we're back with Jesus and it's Antonio Conte tactics. It's impressive how Chelsea has transformed in over 15 games. I mean, after Liverpool and Arsenal's defeat, we were playing rubbish. Antonio Conte had to do something. And he tried to change the system, but when you try to change a new system, you need the right players and you need to convince them 
that there's another way to get results and Antonio Conte did install a new system and made it work. On our last game against West Brom, we confirmed that Antonio Conte is not married to one idea. I mean, the 3 for 3 formation was not working and during the 90 minutes, he changed the formation at least in three occasions, trying to break the luck that the Baggies set on their goal. Now, some people think that it's just about the wingbacks, but it's a lot more. It's the high pressure, it's the balance between the defense and the offense, it's the intensity, it's the confidence and the patience that the Italian uh, have brought to the boys in blue. We are very fortunate to have a manager that's not afraid to take on risks and that read a game as well as Antonio Conte does. So point number five for our Sunderland preview uh, is my point and I want to talk to you about the absolute beauty and magic that is our boy Diego Costa. So it's not just this season, it's actually been the whole calendar year. The last 12 months, Diego Costa has been absolutely phenomenal for Chelsea. And he is getting the plaudits that he deserves, but there's no harm in piling a few more on him because you know what? He deserves them. I think last weekend's game against West Brom really epitomised um, that kind of drive, commitment, desire that he's showing for us this season. Um, you know, it was a tough game. Tony Pudis set his team up to frustrate, really. Um, we, I think... West Brom were the first team that have really been able to kind of break up our new sort of 3-4-3 formation and really stifle us to the point where we weren't creating as many opportunities as we normally do. But that didn't stop us from banging on the door. It didn't stop us from trying and it didn't stop Diego Costa from ex it basically not taking no for an answer. That goal that he scored where he set it up, he made it himself, he shrugged off the def defenders, he smashed it in with, with his left foot from an angle that he had absolutely no right to score a goal from. And it's moments like that when you're sitting there as a fan in the, you know, in the stadium or watching it at home or in the pub, that you realise that, wait a minute, this could be our year. Goals like that, little, little victorious, little scrappy 1-0 wins, they are the things that champions uh, uh, you know, build their championships on. And I think Diego's been fantastic. 12 goals in the last 15 matches says it all. And also, what I don't think has been spoken enough about in recent weeks is his disciplinary record. Somehow... He's managed to turn himself around, apart from uh, trying to get involved in the scrap against Man City, but that's Diego, we'll let him off for that. His disciplinary record of recent weeks has been absolutely phenomenal. He has not been booked in nine games. Actually, coincided with our uh, consecutive win streak, um, Diego Costa has not picked up a yellow card, which for someone who plays in that kind of rumbustious style that he does, it, it's fantastic. And also, the fact that in the beginning of the season, he was picking up bookings left, right and centre. The way he's managed to turn that around is, is something really commendable. I think in our first six games, Diego had picked up four yellow cards. So it was, he's basically been living on the edge ever since, uh, ever since six games in. We're now, what, 14 or so games in. He hasn't picked up another booking. And as long as he can survive until January without getting booked again, then that threat of a suspension will be eradicated. And I think, you know, it's good news for us that he doesn't get suspended at all this season if we can help it. Um, so, yeah, my little point, Diego Costa, he is going to fire us to victory against Sunderland. I think Gary Cahill uh, is onto something, actually, when he said this week that Costa, with the way he's performing, he's slowly, slowly kind of working his way into the hearts of Chelsea fans and you know he's not there yet I don't think but Cahill compared him to Didier Drogba you know the, the legendary Didier Drogba um, and says that you know the way that Costa's playing he ain't that far away and you know what Gary I believe you so that was our preview for Sunderland Chelsea if you want to get involved like Jesus like Yarin in any of our future videos then it's simple to do check it out in the description below there should be all the details of how you can send your video into us and like them have it played out here on the channel. So guys, let's make it 10 wins on the trot against Sunderland. Remember, blue is the colour.